Hi, my name is Calvin Falwell, and I'm the third in bass clarinet of your Sarasota Orchestra. Additionally, I'm the clarinet professor at the University of South Florida. So, the topic of this lecture is careers in music. And some of you in the Youth Orchestra program and elsewhere may be wondering, how do I start a career in music after high school? Well, the obvious first step is you need to move on to a good undergraduate institution. And you want to, after that, you want to make sure that you move on to an excellent graduate institution where you really start learning the tricks of the trade and you start working with a master teacher and you're able to make that jump from student to professional. But there is one caveat. All of this being said, you want to make sure that your education is done at little or no cost to you. There's some really fancy schools out there that have great names and excellent faculty, but at the end of it, you are going to be faced with a large student loan bill. If you're not able to get a nice combination of performance scholarships and academic scholarships. So what I advise all of my students to do is, whether it be auditioning for an undergraduate program or auditioning for a graduate program, always look for the best financial deal that has the best teacher and the best location. And sometimes those schools are little known gems that you may have not heard of. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. So let's do a little experiment to start out. Close your eyes with me, nice and tight. No peeking. Okay, so once you have your eyes closed, I want you to think, what is the first thing you can see in your brain that you can be doing for the rest of your life? If it's anything but music, do that. The reason why I say that is, a career in music is not for the faint of heart. A career in music education, ooh, that's not even for the faint of heart in the slightest. So you want to make sure that you're doing yourself justice and that this is absolutely something that you want to do. Likewise, if you're going into music education, don't do it as a fallback plan uh, for music performance, saying, oh, well, I really want to do music performance, but I'm going to major in education as a fallback plan. That's a disservice to you and especially a disservice to the students. Music education is not a fallback plan. It is a vocation that is a calling, and it's very, very important for all of us to realize that. Okay, so why is it important to have music as the most important thing that you see going forward? And why is this career path not for the faint of heart? Well, like many career paths, like being a lawyer or a doctor um, or even engineer, there are many trials and tribulations along the way. It's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and after you're finished with your advanced degrees, you may be asking, what next? How do I establish myself? Well, in the world of music, it's not as simple as just going down and filling out a job application. While universities have a little bit more straightforward job application process uh, than a symphony orchestra, where you actually have to go audition behind a uh, screen, it is still difficult to get a position. There are positions available, so I don't want to scare anyone off at this point. But it begs the question, what do I do in the meantime between getting a full-time university gig or a full-time orchestra gig? How do I survive? How do I turn this passion that I have into an actual job? And how do I earn money off of it? Well, the basics is freelancing. So in this video, I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step lecture of things that have helped me in my career and things that I know have helped other people in their careers. Not only are those people in the orchestra uh, that I get to play with on a daily basis, the Sarasota Orchestra, but they populate orchestras all over the country and all over the world. So without further ado, I hope you glean something from these pearls of wisdom in careers in music. Where do I start? Careers in music, where do I start? Tips for success as a freelance musician. Have you thought about what it takes to find success as a freelance musician? If you're fortunate to have gone to school in an area with a strong art scene, you may be able to launch this aspect of your career right where you are. But often, it will mean moving to a more urban environment after college. Moving to a new city is difficult if you do not have a personal or musical connections there. 
You will start out in the back of the line behind local professors and their graduate students, recent graduates who stayed in town, important people's spouses, and those who have been a part of the local scene since you were a toddler. But don't lose heart. You will eventually be recognized for your reliability, talent, networking skills, and humble, hardworking attitude. As long as you consistently display those qualities, you have an opportunity to shine. Personally, I experienced this whenever I moved to Philadelphia after completing my graduate studies in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. While I found a slow start, I did eventually break into the freelance scene and have a successful freelance career before moving to Florida. Be ready to self-promote. Get your one-page resume looking as good as it can and make it easily available. You can carry paper copies with you wherever you go, but paper is becoming a thing of the past. It's better to also have all the information you want to convey on a website, resume, bio, performance calendar, teaching philosophy, sound clips, whatever. And get some great looking business cards made to share your information quickly and easily. Study other websites from people you find uh, impressive in your field. For instance, when I started uh, looking at my website and how I can put my website together, I started looking at various clarinetists and other woodwind performers that I aspired to be like and kind of copied some of the best things that I saw from them to make a sleek, self-promoting website. So getting back to the resume, here's a sample resume and this is an example of mine. You have obvious letterhead up at the top, what you do, your address, point of fact. You notice I have clarinet and bass clarinet listed after my name. Early on in my career, I sent my resume to a number of personnel managers, and they all emailed me back saying, it does not say what instrument you play on the resume. And one of them even said, if a resume does not list your instrument, it immediately goes in the trash. So this is one thing that I definitely had to redo early on. So performance experience. You see my current position, Sarasota Orchestra, third bass clarinet. Then you see other prominent uh, substitute positions I have, Philadelphia Orchestra, Alabama Symphony, Fort Worth Symphony. And then you list your uh, previous positions in chronological order. Then also you can list summer festivals. And audition experience is very key, especially if you're wanting to audition for orchestras and get into the freelance orchestra scene. Education is very, very important because they want to know that you have studied with good teachers and you have very good training. So obviously you list your education and then below that your teachers and then references. References early on are going to be teachers and mentors, but can also be principal players in orchestras that you've worked with before. Find a web hosting company. Do some shopping around for web hosting. New companies are constantly forming to offer affordable packages, deals on domain names, along with some pretty professional looking design help. Some of the best options out there are wordpress.com and wix.com. Personally, I host through wordpress.com, but a number of my friends and colleagues host through wix.com and have had excellent results. Create your website. Create a website that celebrates your victories while also allowing people to get to know you as a musician. A website filled with bravado and not much else is rather annoying. But a website that is genuinely represents who you are as a unique individual will always be compelling. If your goal is to teach through your own studio, a well-written teaching philosophy is very important. It also allows potential students and their parents to make a connection to you and feel comfortable choosing you as their teacher. Share your particular interests, areas like classical jazz, crossover music, or Latin American folk music. Your website helps you get past the awkward stranger phase when, you first, uh, when people first discover you. Personally, on my website, I have a number of uh, Instagram stories on there, clips, and um, different things that kind of like help you relate to who I am as an individual. For example, we'll go to my website right now, and I can show you. So as you can see on my website, 
You have an easy navigation, home, about, listen, online lessons form, music uh, right here, gallery, calendar, and news. Easy to navigate, got a review. And then to kind of humanize me to a potential uh, customer, shall we say, um, you have my Instagram feed. And this has clips of my playing. And also it has clips about one of my favorite passions, cycling. Then down here at the bottom, you have links to sponsorships that I have through Buffet Clarinets, Daddario Reads. And then it also has a button here, you know, what I am doing when not playing clarinet, Strava. So I'm usually riding a bike. And also here, follow me. It gives you a chance to click on that. And then that immediately takes you through to my Instagram page. Now, moving back to the website for a moment, navigation is key. Again, going to our about section to learn a little bit about who you are. And you want to have a well-written bio that kind of highlights various things that you've done. Um, but again, try and leave out as much of the bravado as possible. Then you have a link for audio examples. And most recently, I put up an online lesson form since a lot of things are moving to digital. All right. So basically, having a slick website is very important, but also be sure to maintain the human element in it because it is your modern day business card, if you will. Another important aspect is stay in performance shape. The imposed downtime of having no gigs in the beginning of a new place allows you to be the best in shape that you possibly can be. Design an efficient and regular practice schedule for yourself so that you, can, that you are always ready at a moment's notice to fill in at a gig. These types of opportunities will most likely be your first calls. From my own personal experience, when I moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, some of the first calls that I got were subbing with regional orchestras in the area, whether it be the Lancaster Symphony, the Allentown Symphony, New Jersey Symphony, um, Philadelphia Opera Company, it was always last minute fill-ins. So you always wanna make sure that your chops are at the top um, of your game. Scales, long tones, orchestral excerpts, and sight reading practice should be your priorities. Familiarize yourself with any relevant music you haven't learned yet. Your goal is to be able to say yes to anything that comes along and to play so well that you get called again make calls or emails. Contact local band directors about coming in to teach pullout lessons or after school lessons. Call the personal managers of local part-time orchestras and ask if you can audition for the sub list. If there's a good college or full-time orchestra in your area, contact the professors or principal players and take a lesson. Share your interest in subbing and other side work if you hit it off together. Learn who the contractors in your area are and email them your press packet, headshot, resume, bio, and links to pertinent information on your website. In short, make sure people know where to find you. I can't stress this point enough. Early on in a musician's career, you have to take necessary steps to put yourself out there. If you think that you're going to audition or apply for a teaching job and it's just going to land in your lap, that's simply not the case. You have to be a go-getter and you have to make opportunity for yourself. An example that I give my students from my own uh, personal experience is after graduating from uh, graduate school in Pittsburgh, I sent emails to every university and every part-time orchestra from Portland, Maine, down to Miami, Florida, and over to St. Louis. So basically an entire half of the country I went on to Google, searched for different places and different orchestras and universities. I got a lot of no's, I got a lot of maybes, but I got a lot of, can you send a CD? Or can you send us uh, links to your playing? And luckily, one university in Philadelphia asked if I could come in for an interview to teach part-time. That led to teaching part-time at the university, 
connections with the Philadelphia Orchestra, connections with local contractors in Philadelphia, and with local schools. So it is possible, but you have to take the time to put yourself out there. Look for a faculty to join. Community music schools are a great place to meet other active freelancers. Through them, you can learn about gigs, create chamber music groups, or jazz trios, and generally learn the lay of the land. And in the meantime, you get paid to teach classes or individual lessons. Don't be afraid of teaching courses such as music history, theory, or music appreciation. In short, keep your academic chops sharp. This can provide steady income while you face dry spots in playing. Diversification is very important in this field. Again, back from my own experience and the experience of many of my colleagues in the orchestra, early on, it's a mix of teaching private lessons, teaching adjunct at a a college or a university, and playing as many gigs as you possibly can. Don't be afraid to diversify your portfolio. Create performance opportunities. Give a recital at a local church, theater, or a music venue. Promote that recital aggressively. Contact local newspapers, classical radio stations, and arts bloggers to announce it and to offer yourself for an interview or review of the show. If it goes well, consider creating a music series. I can't tell you how many colleagues I have around the country who have turned giving a one-off recital into an entire recital series. And now their full-time job is going around the country giving recitals. But the other side of that is they spend a lot of time pushing their press packet out to local organizations, theaters, churches, and schools to be able to get these gigs and perform these recitals. It is very rewarding work but it is also very time consuming and hard work. Say yes to anything. Any work, even marginally related to performing, could lead to more performing. Do anything you feel capable of doing that will allow you to work with other musicians and let them see you shine. Entry-level arts administration work, subcontracting for gigs, or just teaching or playing in, in various situations you didn't imagine yourself in, are all fair game. Something that you should also know about me is not only do I play summer festivals uh, during the summertime when we're off with the orchestra, but I also contract and am personnel manager for one of them. This is extremely important because it helps diversify your portfolio of experience as a performer and as an artist. Not only that, it also adds to a little bit more financial security in those lean times. Once you get the gig, part one. By the time you start getting calls for gigs, you may have gone through periods of frustration, mild depression, and panic at the thought of having wasted your college years practicing your instrument instead of doing something marketable. Don't let it show. Whether you're playing beside brilliant musicians or people who seem uh, strayed in their own performance jobs, address everyone as a respected colleague. Show your appreciation after solos at rehearsals, good or bad, and thank the regulars in the ensemble for letting you play with them. This is extremely important because wherever you play, you're gonna find all sorts of musicians at various points in their career. And remember, Everyone else was once starting out, and you too will one day be the musician that is seasoned and giving an opportunity to someone new. Getting the gig, part two. Make direct eye contact. Smile, offer your hand, and introduce yourself. Though today with our social distancing practices, you might just give a little wave or an elbow bump or a fist bump. Act happy to be there even if it's been difficult week filled with rejections. There are far more good musicians than there are jobs. So if your ego gets in the way, you won't be called again. Being nice to people is extremely important. This is something that I call soft skills. And sometimes I feel like it's lacking. When I'm working with musicians, 
the thing that I enjoy the most is working with good people who are happy and easy to get along with. Because if you're happy and you're easy to get along with, you're able to really make some excellent artistic choices and artistic products. Treat every rehearsal, no matter how mundane the music, as, it, as if it is the most important performance of your life. You are being judged every time you make a sound by people who decide where to put you on the sublist. This goes far beyond freelancing, but also goes into your full-time orchestral work. You always need to be on your A-game because people are always listening and you always want to put your best foot forward. Establishing yourself takes time to be recognized for who you are and what you can do. And every area is different. Every musical community is a small one and every action and statement you make will follow you. If you consistently present yourself as willing to work, hold yourself to high standards and act generously and with kindness in the face of others struggle, people will want to work with you. The longer you remain that excellent colleague, the higher your name will rise on the sub list. Well, I certainly hope that this presentation has given you a better insight on how to start a music career. Remember, it all begins with putting yourself out there and freelancing until you get the big job at either the university or the orchestra. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at the University of South Florida or send an email to the education department at the Sarasota Orchestra. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day.